Podcast. Welcome. In this tutorial, we'll have a closer look at Soundphone Player. For those uninitiated, sound fonts were a standard developed by EMU Systems and Creative Labs. Originally, they were PC sound card makers. They became a popular way of distributing multi-sampled instrument libraries starting from the mid-1990s. In other words, sound fonts are sample banks, and they still remain popular today as there are a great many freely available sound fonts on the internet. But what exactly are sound fonts? They're a container format a little like a zip file that packs multiple PCM or WAVE sound files into a larger file, with slice and loop information and certain rules for playing those files. By default, Soundphone Player ships with a single string ensemble patch. As this is the only sound font we ship with FL Studio, you will have to find your own sound fonts to play with this plugin. To be clear, this is not because we hate sound fonts, but because we choose to use more sophisticated alternatives like DirectWave and Flex for sample-based content. And we want to keep the installer as slim as possible, and the internet is full of free and cool sound fonts. To load a new sound font, click here. If you have loaded a sound font that contains more than one patch, you can select different patches here. Before we look at the main controls, the pencil located in the top right corner of the interface shouldn't be overlooked. Click it to open the current sound font bank in a sound font editor to edit instrument definitions. The first time you run this feature, the sound font player will ask you to browse and select a sound font editor to be used for this button. We recommend the Polyphone sound font editor. It's free and allows you to get inside sound fonts to see how they tick. There are a number of controls to tweak sound font patches too. Envelope 2 is an amp envelope. When all sliders are set to zero, the original amp envelope settings saved in the sound font are used, if there are any. At the minimum value that isn't fully down to one, those original settings are overridden and the envelope works like you would expect an amp envelope to work. The reverb and chorus panels allow sending audio to either a basic built-in reverb and chorus or up to two external effects in FL Studio. While the sends are labeled reverb and chorus, you can use them for any send effect. The level knob decides how much of the signal is sent to the effect. Click here to use the sound font's built-in effects levels. All sound fonts have an internal pitch LFO for vibrato. This can be overridden using the LFO panel. Set pre-delay, modulation amount and speed. The amount knob is a little tricky for historical reasons. If the amount knob is at zero, fully left, the built-in pitch LFO is used. At 12 o'clock, there is zero modulation amount. Turning to the left is negative polarity and to the right is positive polarity. In the miscellaneous panel, you can control a low pass filter using the cut knob. Mod will use the envelope to modulate the filter frequency or in some cases also do vibrato. This depends on the settings inside the sound font. To use the built-in values for everything, turn both knobs fully left. 
The options menu hosts several resampling quality modes. Depending on your taste, you may enjoy a lower or higher fidelity sound. We have crunchy, which sounds like the 90s. Standard, which is the default. HQ. And Extreme HQ. If you can hear a noticeable difference between HQ and Extreme HQ, please make sure there are no radioactive arachnids near you and contact your local hospital immediately as you may have other superpowers too, you never know. Velocity Filter Cutoff In some sound fonts, velocity is linked to filter cutoff by default. You can override that with this option. The EMU volume envelope setting makes the volume envelope behave like the one in the EMU 10K1 hardware sampler for which sound fonts were originally designed. Fix unexpected levels will attenuate sound fonts that reuse sample layers from other keys or velocities to create artificial stereo effects. When this is off, some patches may play very loudly or quietly compared to others. It's best to leave this on as is the default. And that's really all you need to know about SoundFont Player to get started using sound fonts in your projects. Decades of vintage sampling goodness await. As always, remember to check out the video information for any manual and video links and the demo projects used in this video.